Hello, this is Dwight Kelly, one of the researchers on the African American High School's History Research Project, and it is my pleasure to invite you to view a video of the McKinley High School Alumni Center located at 1530 Thomas Delpit Drive in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. McKinley is the oldest predominantly African American public high school in the state of Louisiana. McKinley opened its doors in 1916 and held its first graduation in 1916 as well. The site now houses a museum, a community center, and some state offices. Enjoy a tour of this historic museum that showcases the legacy of Baton Rouge's McKinley High School. Alumni Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, my principal job is oversight of the entire building and the management of the staff and also the tenants and the activities that occur in this 34,000 square foot building. This building, and as you see it now, is, exists in the same as it was in 1926 when it was built. It was rebuilt though in 2006 because in 1998, to an accident and some young kids playing with matches on the top of the building while it was abandoned, the building burned down in total. The thing that was left was the wall here on the southeast side and some of the structures in the back. But the front of this building, the part that says McKinley High Alumni Center, used to say McKinley Elementary, no, used to say McKinley High School, McKinley Elementary School, and uh, now it says McKinley High School and Alumni Center. This building, the thing that I talked about, the things that did endure. There was a structure over on the side right here, the south tip, that endured. However, these same four marble towers, when you look at this building when it was built in 1926, those four towers, the two round ones and the one square of the columns up here. And that same side at the top that shows McKinley High School that was here. The, the lights up at the top are the same ones that were here originally. McKinley originally sat on a hilltop and he didn't have the landscaping here. I remember when I was in school here, the school bell comes from the tower over on the east and west side. We would line up in the morning according to classes. I did four, I did fifth and sixth grade here. Music would play and we would march into the school through the front door, passing the principal's office and going to our classes. I was here fourth and fifth. Our classroom was upstairs on the second floor on the northeastern side right here. When you look at the building itself, you'll see the structure is essentially the same. The landscaping is different, as I told you. This planter was added in 2006, and of course, if you look down at the ground, you'll see lots of bricks here. And these bricks, we went to a building campaign when the Alumni Association was established in 82. It bought the building before the city and the state decided to tear it down. The building was bought for some $100,000, and then we went into an extensive fundraising campaign to renovate the building. Between 1992 and 1998, we raised sufficient funds to renovate the building. In 1998, some weeks, months before the building was, the renovation was just started, the building was destroyed by some kids uh, by accident playing with matches up on the roof. And so then we went to another extensive fundraising to raise additional money because the building then had to be restructure, the foundation had to be worked on, and the internal parts would have to be worked on and relayed out. And so that was, was done. That at the tune of about $3.7 million, so we raised originally about $1.4 and ended up with $3.7 million to rebuild the building. When you walk into this building, you'll see it's very different from what it was, from what it was before. We have a 1928 yearbook inside. The yearbook shows that the building, a very, very old building, wood structures inside. Uh, 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 lots of, uh, lots of uh, um, um, uh, 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 oils were used to clean the floors. And so that's the way to build it. And so after 40 years, 50 years of doing that, when the kids played with the matches, it was a tinderbox. It went up in a hurry, this old building did. Okay. But when you go inside the building, it doesn't look anything like it looked before. From the outside, so this building is identical to the, what it was in 1926. Okay. Okay. As I told you, 1998 when the building burned, burned down, we had to go into an extensive program to uh, raise funds. One of, the, one, of the, one of the principal ways we, we did it was we sold these bricks. Bricks sold $100 for a family, corporate sponsors, 
corporate sponsors were $300, and some corporate sponsor paid a couple of thousand dollars, three, four, five, ten thousand dollars just for a brick. So when you look through, you'll see not only are members graduates of the class, you'll see classes, individuals, families, and businesses bought bricks. And that's way that's another way we're able to raise money. The bricks currently in the front and off in practically in the front, but we will start another brick raising campaign in the 2000. Uh, 2018 in, in August, September, and by next year, June, we'll have it moving full-fledged, and what we're going to do is going to fill up all the areas that you see here with bricks that are purchased by individuals who will buy a brick campaign. Now, when the building burned down, we lost an awful lot of bricks, too, because people came up. We were convinced when the building burned down, they're going to tear McKinley down, it wouldn't be anymore, so I know a couple of thousand bricks left here because people came up to get those old charred bricks to take them home, as a matter of fact. I have two at home myself and I brought one back and when you come inside you'll see the one I brought back exactly from the fire and we put it to commemorate or to demonstrate uh, to give you an artifact from the fire. That's I don't know what they're called but these are, that's the original one that was on the school. You can see it's McKinley High School colored in 1926. That's when it was started. East Baton Rouge Parish and you can see the parish president and the superintendent of the school but the other thing that was, was uh, sort of uh, uh, unique is that you had a colored committee. J.M. Frazier, who's the Dr. Frazier, was the first president, was the first principal of McKinley High School, and he came to McKinley after being uh, chancellor and leader of the Baton Rouge Academy, which was another school that, that was uh, for, for higher education in Baton Rouge. There was not a, 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 a high school. It was simply a school of higher learning. So I'm not sure of the grades, but I was able to discover that in my career as I started to look through the history. That's the cornerstone for the original school, and we thought it was important. If you look at the bricks, you'll see the bricks appear to be very old, but the mortar is new. And what we did is a lot of the bricks that came off of the original building, we put back on the building since we were able to save them. But many of these are old, real old bricks that we bought because they moved back to the building because we wanted to maintain its original historical colors. Okay. An office building and a community center. And that's what it's been since that time. It's what this shows is the fire which occurred on what, July 3rd, 1998, and as I said, some months, I think it was about a month, two or three months before we were going to start the re re renovation of the original building. And as you can see, after the fire, I told you a, a moment ago that the fire, the column still existed. You can see the column still up front that exists, but you can see the extensive damage also done to the building. You can see the outer wall, the inner walls, and all the rubble inside the next morning with the fire trucks are here where the building actually collapsed. So what we ended up with, that corner that I told you on the uh, southeastern, on the southeastern side in the front, that corner was back up. And then you can see the scaffolding here and some of the bracing that goes on here as the building was prepared. And as a matter of fact, the center frame here shows the fire, the actual fire that night and the building ablaze here and then over on the side in the morning advocate. We just did an article about Five days ago on the third, 50 years or 60 years after the fire, it was. And what we did is we, they came in to show that from the ashes, McKinley has risen once again. But the school burned down, essentially. And then we brought it all the way back. I talked to you about the insides of the building. I remember when I was in school, I'd come through this door, then in and down the hall. And to the right was the principal's office. I didn't know very much about that, but I did know where the fourth graders and the fifth graders went when I was in school here. And that is the fire, and you can see the fire, and then some of the, some of the work that's done on the center. And you can notice on the fire when it says, it says McKinley Elementary School right outside where it says McKinley Alumni Center, because that's what it was when it, at the time it burned down. It was the elementary school building which had been used as a Head Start Center and it fallen into disrepair. There was some discussion about when we re rebuilt this, uh, the building to bring McKinley back as uh, possibly the library, possibly a city building, and, and to give McKinley only a part of the building that we use for the Alumni Association. Since the Alumni Association was founded in 1982, and I think we talked about that a little while ago, and they bought this building in 92, the association decided we're going to go into an extensive fundraising effort and then purchase the building and renovate it and try to get it back to its original structure. And as you can see, it pretty much is back to the original structure externally. Inside, we have 14 businesses currently located in the building, uh, an active uh, classroom, uh, conference rooms, some meeting areas, and 
uh, two very large conference halls upstairs and downstairs. And also the classroom, we have an edu full, full, a full educational center in here also. The thing that was done when the building was rebuilt, it was built such that we could have a museum, a very small museum, a one-room museum here in the building. And so off to your right, you'll be able to see that museum. And what we've done is we've collected from graduates of McKinley, people in the state, and others, and the school itself, artifacts and bits of history that we put in the museum. Right outside the museum, you can see band uniform from 1980s or so, or actual uniform from about 85 or so, and then we think it's also important, if you notice right above the door, we have our local politicians. These people, every one of them were uh, instrumental, except the new mayor, instrumental in raising funds for this building. And so, as you can see, some of the politicians above that we placed above, the thing that's of interest also, when we talked about the governor himself, uh, Cedric Richmond and some of the others, uh, Tyra Wicker, who helped raise money for the alumni center. They've been involved in this for an awful long time. And I, I, I venture to say that the McKinley Alumni Center, this 34,000 square foot building, is the only structure of this sort in the city of Baton Rouge and probably in the state of Louisiana wherein you have an alumni center with a devoted portion for the museum and also you have a center that has space for the association plus it carries on routine business. So you see McKinley's a 501c3, a small business. If you look, if you look down on the floor here, while we're outside, I didn't show it to you, but Tony Morrison in February of 2016 uh, issued a, a, a plaque to us at a bench by the side of the road. Many of you are so familiar with the Tony Morrison's. It is to indicate history of regions in the struggle of African Americans. This is the bench to commemorate the 1953 boycott. The city of Baton Rouge was the first city in the nation to actually undergo, execute a boycott that was led by Dr. T.J. Jemison, who's about, whose church, Mount Zion, is up the road about oh, eight or nine blocks. But then this is one of the focal points for that bus boycott. The bus boycott did not last very long. It only lasted, what? The bus boycott that only lasted for about it's a seven, eight days, but it did amount to, it did happen to bus, buses opening up and no designated seating for, for, for individuals. Now what I've shown you here is, this is the band uniform, and that was a band uniform contributed by the school from that time. It just happened to be in close proximity to the, the plaque for the bench. But this is one of the things that we've gotten from, from the school, and we've had it in the museum for a number of years now. And that is the band director's uniform, and then an actual band uniform. McKinley has a proud tradition of its band. When I was in high school, it was a, what is a marching 100. I think it's probably still about the marching 125 now. We, I always said McKinley had the best dressed band and the best dressed, af, best dressed athletes in the state of Louisiana. And I challenge anybody to, uh, to, 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 to uh, catch me on that. Uh, in, in, in the museum itself, what we have is, if you look at the door, it was the historical marker for the school. If you, if you remember when you looked at the fire, over on, when we showed you the fire, we showed the historical marker was in place in 1998, but all of a sudden it disappeared. And since it disappeared, we don't know where it went. But well, we, we've been fortunate enough to get one of our alumni to buy a new plaque for us, and we'll be putting that within, within the next five to, five to six weeks. So we'll have a brand new one outside, and that'll take care of the outside. The museum itself started as a single room. What we did is we had the Louisiana Department of History, State Department of History, to come in and put the display board along the right side right here where it starts with the first principal, upper, upper left, Dr. J.M. Frazier, and ends with the last principal, uh, Dr. James Cador. And McKinley has just been, a, just been uh, 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 given a brand new principal, assigned a brand new principal on June the 30th, and that, that's Dr. Ezra. Petrie. So what we do is we show the history of McKinley from 1926 in this building. It does not show the history of McKinley prior to this building. Though McKinley did have its first graduates in 1916, four ladies, and those are the first ones to graduate from McKinley High School. Now, it carried the name of Baton Rouge Colored High School, but soon to be renamed McKinley High School. And some of the principals are, principals are Dr. Frazier, and then you have the doctor, Mr. Caesar Piper. Mr. Jackson, Mr. Julius Thomas, Mr. West, and my principals when I was in high school here. Hmm. 
Yeah. My principal when I was in high school, Mr. Jackson, was uh, 45 to 58, and my principal when I was in high school was Mr. Thomas, and he was a principal from 58 to 68, and then again 69 to 70. And Mr. West came on, Mr. West came on to be principal after Mr. Thomas. He was only with McKinley for a year, and then he was reassigned to another school, and then Mr. Thomas came back for two years, and then we have Coach Breeder, and I called him Coach Breeder because when I was in high school, Breeder coached, he coached track and field at Scotlandville High School, and football also, I think. He, he may have coached football also. And the great thing about this, this board is it shows scenes from McKinley. As I told you, the Louisiana State Department of History put these together, and I find it kind of ironic because they pick all of the classes, but you can see seniors 1963-64. When you see that, that was very important because that was my senior class at McKinley, and we did actually produce a yearbook. Most of the years McKinley did produce yearbooks. Uh, some years they did not, but in the, throughout the 60s we were in pretty good shape. Throughout the 50s we were in pretty good shape with the production of yearbooks. And then I think in the 70s and 80s we, we started up and we picked up every single year, but there are some holes back in the 40s. As a matter of fact, if anybody has a copy of a yearbook between 1928 and 1953, I certainly would like to have one of those. I've seen the 1946 yearbook, and I know it does exist, but I just can't seem to put my hands on it. And the other thing about the pictures is I tell you, that was my class. And then the thing I found most remarkable is when I came back to McKinley, because I was gone. I graduated from college in 69. I was gone from Louisiana for 30 years, and I got back in 99. What I found was I came here and I looked down and there's a picture of me on the bulletin board. I didn't put that up there, so that doesn't have anything to do with me. But I think it's also poignant that I'm on the bulletin board here, and that is a student senate. That's me right there. And so that's me right there with the student senate. And as I remember, I think the honor society is up here somewhere too, as I recall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's a National Honor Society, and that's me right there. They didn't name me with the Senate, but they named me right here. I am Melvin Mitchell right there. Melvin Mitchell right there. So that's in the Honor Society when I was in high school, and I thought that was sort of poignant also. Well, good point. And we talked about principals, and we had uh, Charlie Thomas and Clarence Jones as principals, 86 to 97, 11 years. Clarence Jones was here for about five years. and then. Armand Dean Brown was the principal from 2001 to 2015. So Armand Dean was the principal for 14 years. And then if you, right after Clarence Jones though, in 1997, McKinley, history was made at McKinley. I told you about Dr. Spikes, the first female president of a black university and the first female president of a university in, in Louisiana. You have Almenia F. Warren Free, uh, Freeman Warren. Almenia graduated from McKinley. Almenia was in the class of 62, I think. She graduated two years before I did, and she was the first female and graduate. Of, and al also the only graduate of McKinley to become principal at McKinley. She, and when she comes through, she tells me that always. And Almenia is an integral part of the, of the association and was instrumental in helping us get this building. And then what we've done is, I show you uh, Herman Brister, who was our principal for uh, two years, 2015, 2017, and Dr. James Cato was our president in 17, and and in 2018 we have a brand new principal. We don't have his picture up yet, but I told you, Dr. Ezra Petrie. And some of you can see some of the history in the building. Also, I I like to point to. This is a large whiteboard, and the whiteboard has an awful lot of the history. And when I tell you those stories about Harton High School, Hick Harton High School, and Hickory Street School, and Perkins Road School, and all those schools being located, uh, being, being pre-runners to McKinley, there it is. And it talks about first graduating class, 1916, four ladies, the first African Americans to graduate from high school in Louisiana. And then it talks about the principals. The building was destroyed, as I said, July 3rd, 1998. And it shows some photographs, though you can't really see them along the lower left side over here of the school. And the upper left picture right there is the McKinley High School as it existed in 1926 when it opened. And if you look at the photographs that we showed you earlier, you can see the building is identical from the outside, as a, from the outside. 
And then we have some photographs of the principals themselves on the right side of this whiteboard. I think that's a very important uh, picture to have. The other thing is, when we're talking about schools, and I told you McKinley had been rebuilt. McKinley was, McKinley was rebuilt in 1951. It is now the McKinley Middle Magnet School. So that 1951 school was torn down and the magnet school was put in its place. That's this second panel, this second panel right here. That's what McKinley looked like when it was on McCaleb Street and, uh, and Louisa Street under, the, under what is now the interstate. And then in 1961, when a brand new school was built down on McKinley Street, that's the lower pane on the left right there. I went to that school as a 10th grader. So the wall that you're looking at now, this is the wall that shows old great Americans and contributors to the McKinley Alumni Association, this building, and then to McKinley. Some McKinley has graduated law, many lawyers, uh, clergymen, um, um, uh, judges, uh, international uh, entertainers, uh, and, uh, doctors, uh, inventors and coaches and professional athletes. And so what this wall does show you, I know we talk about who's the most prominent person to graduate from McKinley. I would say it's probably Eddie Robinson. Eddie Robinson, who won more uh, college football games than any other coach and was known as the number one in first place for a long time until Joe Paterno was reinstated. But Eddie Robinson graduated from McKinley High School. He was born feet, uh, 150 or so feet from this spot, born, raised, and lived right behind the school. He left here, went on to Leland College up north of uh, Baton Rouge, and then went on to Grambling for an illustrious career. And on the other side, to the immediate right, you're going to see Dr. Spikes once again. We think she is perhaps one of our greatest graduates. Um, 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 to to, 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 uh, to a hold a prominent location in education. And then you'll see Judge Pitcher, Freddie Pitcher, uh, off to the left. Lowell Lagarde, who was instrumental in getting this building. If you look to the left, continue all the way on the, on the second row, all the way to the extreme left, that is our highest ranking military man to graduate from McKinley, Major General Charles Honore. Major Honore lived, uh, once again, four or five blocks from here, served in the Army for some 38 years. Immediately to, to, to Major General Honore is uh, Donnie Albert. Donnie Albert was uh, a Grammy Award winning singer, Porgy, and best world traveler. And then we have some of our politicians along that second row, too. You'll see Ted James. You'll see our president in the red tie. That's, the, that's uh, D Reverend Dale Flowers. He's the president of the Alumni Association. And uh, uh, the Reverend Dr. Willie uh, Miles Marshall. Uh, Willie Marshall Miles, who is also on the trustee board. If you move across the second row, you'll see Joseph Delpit. I talked to you about him outside many, many first in the city of Baton Rouge City Council, uh, state legislature, representative, state senator, president pro temp of the Senate, and then instrumental in getting this bill, in, in, in leading the fight in this building. What you'll see also on the right is the most prominent, uh, the most prominent uh, Gordon C. Taylor, the most prominent black uh, uh, clergyman in the United States. As a matter of fact, Taylor did, uh, when Barack Obama went into the White House, Taylor did some of those official swearing ins for him. And if you look uh, immediately above, the, you see the fellow in the derby in the orange hat, that's Buddy Guy, Buddy Guy, Grammy Award winning uh, uh, guitarist. He, uh, he uh, represented lots of awards, and good buddy came back to McKinley, though he didn't graduate. He was here with us for a good while. Buddy uh, donated the guitar and some of his some other awards that he was presented by the president. And we we are very very proud to have President Obama on our wall also because he is a life member of the McKinley Alumni Association. McKinley High School was the first African American high school that a pres a sitting president has visited to hold a town hall meeting. He did that in 2016. We're so pleased that President Obama would come, the first African-American president would come to the first African-American high school in the state of Louisiana and to give us that distinction. And at that moment, he did sign to become a, oh, we did sign him to become a member of the Alumni Association. And right next to President Obama is Ed Pratt, a noted columnist nationally and internationally um, and, and locally for uh, the newspaper. And I think that about does it, the people on the wall. You have some other judges, uh, Cleo Fields, uh, U.S. Representative, uh, Judge White, uh, Ed Barnes, an artist. Uh, 
Miss Herson, one of the early graduates from McKinley, immediately under Dr. Frazier. Judge John Michael Gidry, local judge in uh, Providence. And, one, and, and the, I would say the historian laureate for the McKinley Alumni Center is this lady in the white right here. That's Eloise Palfrey. I know some things about the center. But Eloise knows everything, and when I have a question, I call her. As a matter of fact, she called me today. I need to call her back and see what she wants to tell me because she always calls me to tell me something. And immediately to the right of Eloise, I told you Doris Thompson, who was the president of the Alumni Association, when we went into the extensive fundraising for the building. And then you have Lori Burris, who was also a city councilman. And if you look immediately on the lower Burris, you'll see E.J. Mensah and his father, um, um, uh, 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 Coach George Minson, and so we thought it was sort of appropriate that Coach Minson, one of the one of the winningest football coaches in the history of McKinley, and that is his son E.J. And since we decided, we decided to put both of them on the wall. Dr. E.J. Minson put both on the wall, and as you move across the wall, you can see some other prominent people who are important to the association: Mary Mason Gordon. And then you've got Dr. Iris Lott, who did an awful lot of work in this museum to, uh, to help with the expansion and the collection of items that we have, and then some teachers in education. If you look down the wall, or if you look at the jersey, you'll see number 12. I don't know if you remember Tyrus Thomas, the number one draft pick in the 2000, let's see, 2004. 2006, 2006 NBA draft. Tyrus graduated from McKinley High School, went on to play at LSU, was the most valuable player in the 2005-2006 NCAA Finals in Atlanta, Georgia. I don't know if you remember the guy who took the ball behind his back at six foot ten, behind his back down the court, the full court, and made a dunk. Well, Tyrus went on, and Tyrus once again was born and raised ten, about five blocks from this very spot. And then if you look across, I don't know if you remember, if you look across, Rosella Williams is the one on the top of the piano who's instrumental at just the worker bee at the, at the center. Always those administrative, administrative and leadership and management responsibilities that she fulfilled for the center over the years. If you continue to move to the left, you'll see <laughs> the damn five class of 1957. Well, the, the Alumni Association produces a newsletter that's produced uh, that is published once a quarter, and the newsletter had a story in it about the damn five, and so we put the photograph in here, so when people come in to see who the damn five were, it's here on the piano so they can see those. And if it's more, I think it's important that we show you the piano. What the piano amounts to is, that's a piano that belonged to Mr. A.E. Carter. Mr. A.E. Carter was the man who wrote the alma mater for McKinley, taught English for years, and was a, a, quite an accomplished musician. And upon his passing, his family decided to donate that piano. Yeah, we need to work on it a little bit to get it re refurbished, but we try to keep it up, and we certainly want to keep it in the center. And so I told you, Mr. Carter and the Mr. Carter and the piano. Now, as we moved across, we talked about the piano, but we don't want to forget Donald Cheney. Donald Cheney, a 1964 graduate of McKinley High School, went on to play at the University of Houston and went on to coach in the NBA. Many of you remember Cheney with the long arms who was a defensive specialist. Cheney once again. And left, left McKinley in 1964, went on to the University of Houston, drafted in the first round of the NBA draft and went on to play on several championship teams with the Celtics prominent man, but was really, really important to McKinley and the development of, of me and an awful lot of other people at the school. And then you've got that Dr. Alvin Williams. Al graduated from McKinley in 1937, uh, went on to college, was drafted out of college, went on to serve in the Army. And Al is, a, is my uncle. And my uncle was, uh, came out of the Army as a major, a major in 1940. Six, I thought it was a major accomplishment for if you uh, a play on words, a major accomplishment for a black man. And he came back, delivered mail for a while, and went on to Meharry Medical School, and became an attorney. I mean, a doctor here in Baton Rouge. And so I think that pretty much builds the wall. As you enter the museum, immediately to your right, you see encased in glass uh, a book of some sort. That's the first year book. That's the first year book produced by McKinley High School. It was a class of 1928. It was called the Panther back in 1928. Somebody, well, let's see, a lady, Miss uh, Josephson, uh, 
donated that book and it's in pretty good shape and we decided we would enclose that one in glass and turn to the page with, with Mr. Frazier's photograph. Though there are three other copies we've gotten since then, not as in good, good a shape, but we store them in the storage room right here, where I think I've got 70, 72 yearbooks, original yearbooks here, and I said I'm still missing some. I'm missing the 1946 and in that ill. But we've got an awful lot of them here with us. And then along the walls, you can see these are sports teams over the years. Uh, you can see there's a basketball team from 1942 and a football team from 1942. Uh, it says basketball, but I know the second one is a football team. And it shows uh, Mr. Tube, who, is, uh, who uh, was in, the, his family came to just last week to help us identify this. And you can see some of the state championships and by district records we've gotten over the years. The other thing I think is real, real important is to talk about the bell, the McKinley Alumni Bell. When I was outside, I was a small boy in the fifth grade, we would listen to the bell, and that's the actual bell that came off the building. The bot, when, the, when the building collapsed after the fire, we were able to retrieve the bell, so we brought it down, had it refurbished, um, 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 sanded, and repainted. And that is the bell that hung over McKinley High School, elementary school, in this building. So it is now inside. That is the bill, and that's a historical piece. When you walk into the museum, what you'll do is, if you look back off to the right on the wall, uh, McKinley has a, a, a storied history of sports. And so we, what we've done is we just got letterman jackets from, from, from over the years, uh, from 59, and look based on the color, it looks like, through about 80, those letterman jackets. And that just shows you for the various sports. Uh, you can see the one that looks newest, is newest, is Dr. Mensah once again, who is a doctor for the football team. I told you about Dr. E.J. Mensah, he, he performs a medical support for the high school football team, has for a number of years, and he donated his jacket. And he was presented a jacket by the football team, and he donated it to the museum. And then along the museum, you can see some of the other photographs from the state championships and other championships that we won as a school. And there have been many. I think the thing I'd like to talk about more than anything else is this trophy right here in the middle. This is a trophy from 1957. In 1957, the McKinley High School uh, played in the, won the state championship and then went off to Tennessee to play in the national championship. And the national championship had a total of eight teams from across the nation, and McKinley was runner-up. We lost to a team and I don't remember which state, I think it was Kentucky. We lost to another team from Kentucky. So we can proudly profess that McKinley is, was the second best high school basketball team in the nation in 1957. And then many of the players went into the, the high school hall of fame. And then as you, pan, as you pan around the room, you'll be able to see on the wall a whole bunch of them. Because on this wall, on the wall, from top to bottom, what you'll find is some individual photographs of those. There's Boogie Thomas, as I remember, at the top, Boogie Thomas at the top. And then you've got Dream Team 57, those are the starters. And there's, uh, let's see, Emmett Minor, Neil Butler, Cincinnati Powell, who is our first professional basketball player, and then Boogie Thompson. Those are the ones that played on that team. And then, of course, the one at the bottom was... Uh, was some uh, other players from that team, and then the one all the way at the bottom is was uh, was um, Neil Butler, as I remember, as I recall. And that's I think that's an important panel, and that's a that's a hallmark I think for the school. What we did in some of the history in the school from a from a sports standpoint, and then we have other items of sports interest along the wall. I don't know if many of you remember George Anderson was the number one sprinter in the world in 1965, 66, and 67 graduated from McKinley High School. Hmm? George Anderson, and I don't have a picture of George Anderson, but this is from Wikipedia that talks about the fact that George Anderson Sprinter was the, was, the, was the number one sprinter in the world. And he graduated once again from McKinley. And just like always with McKinley, you go seven blocks up that way and you find where George Anderson grew up as a boy. 
There's some other pictures in, along the panel. But the, I, I think the thing I'd really like to draw your attention to is this second panel with those pictures from the top to the bottom. That's the, that's the first basketball game between an African-American basketball team and a white basketball team, a Caucasian basketball team in the history of the city of Baton Rouge. Coach Stewart and McKinley, and that was played in 1969-1970. This is the, these are the results of the second game. The first game was played at Baton Rouge. I'm sorry, at Catholic High School. The first game was played at Catholic High School, and Catholic High uh, lost the first game by five points, as I recall. Uh, and I think that score was 60. One to sixty-five, and this is the second game which was played where they did home and home, and this was the second game that was played. And Catholic High lost this game at home also, but they lost this one by fifteen. And the third game was played at McKinley, and when Catholic High went down to McKinley to play in 1970, the score was 40 to 115, as I remember. So McKinley won that game by some 70 points when we were at home. On the road, it was a little bit tighter. And the remarkable thing is that two of the players out here are still good friend, Willie Titus and I, Dr. Arden, I think his name is. So you'll see Dr. Arden is right here, and Willie Titus is number 55 right there. There's an enduring friendship from that uh, from that game. As a matter of fact, those two guys are the best of players. But golfing buddies, and uh, they'd go uh, travel football, basketball across the city together. I think that's an important piece of history. As we came in, I didn't stop in the lobby outside, but what we did is we have professional athletes, and we talk about professional athletes, and we showed you basketball players. There are professional athletes who are from McKinley in, in, in football also. And what, what you have is you have a number of pitchers here along the window ledge. You'll have Clarence Bubba Harris who went into the Grambling Hall of Fame. And then you have Larry Mativi who's going to go into the Hall of Fame uh, uh, real soon. Larry Mativi here, Clarence Bubba Harris here. But I think the most important fellows are the ones that are the most noteworthy are Herb Williams who played for the San Francisco 49ers. And he played for the 49ers in the late 80s. Uh, coming out of Southern, he played on a couple of Super Bowl teams, and that's Herb Williams. Herb came back and donated his jersey, number 23, that he wore in the playoffs to the center and in the lobby as we walked in. If you're able to get as we start to pan through the jerseys themselves, you'll see that, is, that was Herb's jersey. He decided to come and donate that to us. And the other is Darrell Milburn. Darrell Milburn, uh, here's his photograph. When he went to, he went on to Grambling. I, uh, Herb went to Southern. Herb graduated from McKinley. Got a scholarship, for athletic scholarship, went on to Southern, was drafted out of Southern and played for the 49ers. Darrell went on to Grambling, was drafted out of Grambling by the Detroit Lions, played for the Lions in 91 to 96 or so, and had a very long and distinguished NFL career. So you see, we do have professional football players and athletics. What you'll see, if you look back down at McKinley Sports, and this shows some of the sports competition over the years and the players from McKinley. And you can see we have girls basketball, boys basketball, girls basketball, boys basketball, boys football. And then what we'll show is, and then some track and field. So McKinley has a very, very long history in sports um, uh, and a prominent history in many, many state championships. And we've had good and mixed teams. The old McKinley. Uh, when, when, when McKinley in the 30s, the, the 30s and the early 40s, McKinley would play Southern University, McKinley would play Grambling uh, College, and McKinley would play uh, Leland College. So the high school team would actually play the college teams, and McKinley had a good record then and won more than they lost, I guarantee you, when they were playing back in those days. And so you've got boys and baseball. I never noticed that before. Okay. And I think that's it. That, those are your sports and your athletics. And if you look around, what you'll find is other, other as you move along the panel, you'll find other athletes. As you look along this panel, I think we have the, the all the way at the top, we have Doris Thompson and her board from the Alumni Association board at the very top. That was Doris Thompson. Good morning, Lud Rudley's our, our attorney, Joe Delpit, Judge White, 
Uh, who is Rosella Williams, Ruth Dolores Williams, Olga Gaines, and Eddie Johnson. Upper right, if you look upper right, the rightmost photograph is of Eddie Johnson, the first director of the McKin executive director of the McKinley Alumni Center. Eddie was the director from 2006 to about 2011. Garrick Mayweather was the director from 2011 to 2015, and I became executive director in 2015. Immediately under that photograph is a photograph of the McKinley Marching Band lining up, and that was during our, during our, our uh, 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 Michaela, um, 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 uh, Louisa Street days, and in other words, and then the classes, what I tried to do is every single class that will bring me a class of the, bring me a picture of the class reunion, I tried to put it in the museum somewhere. And as you can see, the room is crowded. There's an awful lot in this room, so what we did after having this single room, we moved on uh, in 2016 to open a wall and move the museum into a second room. On this one, two, three, fourth panel, what you see is there is a McKinley crest donated to us by the class of 1966, some of the proclamations, and some of the photographs from the outside of the building. What we missed was that on this window ledge we're having, I, was I, told you, I told you about Eloise Palfrey, but I want you to make sure you take a photograph of that. You can see what, what state the building was in after the fire. You can see those were some of the years between the fire, between the 98 in 2000, 2005 and six, when we started to rebuild, and you can see McKinley graduates out there providing some sweat equity. We're in there out there sweating and cleaning up the place outside. And then the lady what, mopping her brow is Eloise Palfrey, the same lady I was telling you about who knows the history of everything, everything about McKinley. And that's Eloise has been involved in this McKinley High School journey for an awful long time, from elementary school through college, through this point in our life. But if you look along the window ledge, you'll see a photograph of one of the classes. They, class of 1982, they decided to bring that photograph in. And that's why we have it on the window ledge. And some former football players. And then what we have is, uh, out of the old into the new, what this chart was to show, changing times and, stash, uh, and, and, and fashions, McKinley, from 1928 through 64, 79, 68, 76, 89, 93, and 95. So what we've shown you is just how styles have changed in high school. This was a project by one of the students at the high school. Again, it has the greatest class of all, the class of 1964. I'm always pleased with this because it has the class of 1964, which is my class right here, and it has my wife's class in here. As a matter of fact, there's my wife as an underclassman in this photograph right here. And I know she'll probably be upset at me pointing her out, but there she is, 1968, the class of 1968. And then if you move to the window ledge, if you move to the window ledge, what you see is the fire extinguisher. This fire extinguisher comes from the Lincoln Theater. The Lincoln Theater, uh, the second of two black-owned, second of three black-owned theaters in Baton Rouge when I was a child. Lincoln closed, I would say, in the 70s. But that fire extinguisher came from the Lincoln, and we decided to clean it up and put it in here. I'm currently holding the historical artifacts from the Lincoln Theater here at the center, and we've got them stored inside the center and secured away, wrapped and secured away, because the storage there was, was not dehumidified, and so we had it exposed to the humidity and the elements, and so we decided that we volunteered to safeguard that equipment for them. And once again, we've gone on, you'll see some other photographs of graduates of McKinley and classes of McKinley and some of the artifacts from their meetings. Now, if you look, if you look almost over, if overhead, I think it's also important, I told you in 19, I'm sorry, in 2006, 
groundbreaking was done in the new building and a ribbon cutting ceremony was here at the building and the governor attended. That's the spade from the ribbon cutting ceremony and the ribbon from the ribbon cutting ceremony. That was hell. And then we have other classes who have t-shirts and they want to contribute those so we allow them to hang those in the in the museum. If you look on the left panel right here, I think this is a probably a, a very important panel also because you'll see Huey Douglas, a graduate of McKinley, has two legitimate patents. He inventoried a, a breastplate and some, some, uh, some hip pads for uh, actual football players. So he's in the U.S. Patent Office and these are his patents. And upon his passing, his wife asked that if we would display them here in the, in the museum, and we told her it would be our pleasure to do that. And once again, another fire extinguisher down on the floor, another fire extinguisher from the Lincoln Theater that we have in here. And an old leadership, an old leadership photo album from McKinley High School. We found that in the storage room and refinished it and, re, uh, uh, and touched it up and put it in here. Now this, what I'm stepping now is, this is the second room of the museum. When the museum started, it ended at this doorway. We had so many holdings, we had to open up the museum and put some other things in here. So we did this, as I told you, in 2016. In 2016, we've gone on to show some other, uh, some other, some other bits of history from graduates of McKinley. We've got Stanley, who's a Buffalo Stanley Davidson, who is a Buffalo soldier, and you can see, and he's, he's currently located here in Baton Rouge. And then if you look, Leonard Tillery makes history. <laughs> Leonard Tillery graduated from McKinley, shucks, I'm trying to remember, in 2009, 2009, as I recall, and in 2015, Tillery must have graduated in 2014, 2012, I'm wrong. Tillery graduated from McKinley in 2012 received an academic scholarship to Southern in engineering, had been a football player most of his days, walked on at Southern, became the starting running back as a freshman, and ended up setting the SWAC, the Southwest Athletic Conference all-time rushing record for, uh, as a football player. Leonard went on last year to try out for the Rams, made the team with the Rams, and I don't, I, I'm not sure if he made the whole season, but that was Leonard Tillery. Once again, Leonard Tillery, fellow from the local neighborhood, and, and, and made good as Southern as a walk-on. Not only did he make good, was phenomenal as a running back at Southern. Leonard brought this in one day and presented this to us. I'm trying to remember. Leonard also has another, has another plaque in here from Leonard. And then as I told you, I have an awful lot of the classes. We put an awful lot of the classes in. The class of 1954, that's a photograph of that class upon one of its reunions. I don't know which. And then we got the class, and if you move right off to the panel, you'll see there's a class of six, that's a class of 62 at the bottom. Here's a class of 2006, no, I'm sorry, class of 66 on their 40th anniversary. And then there's a charter from the James M. Frazier, James M. Frazier um, 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 uh, chapter of the uh, National Honor Society, that's the original charter. And the, and the school gave that to us, we're pleased to have it. And we talked about Eddie Robinson a little bit earlier, and that is a photograph of Eddie well into his career uh, on the sidelines coaching a game for Grand Prix. And an important part of the history of, of McKinley Alumni Center then of course is going to be the past of Louisiana and we can see some of the businesses that were located along what was then East Boulevard. It was the chicken shack and then you had uh, the flower shop, the temple theater, uh, Dago Gilbert Funeral Home, D Cells Funeral Home, and some uh, taxi lines that were here also. Ideal Drug Store and some other businesses. Bun Fannies, Jays. When I was a boy, the the street right outside, which is now Thomas Delpit, had all kinds of black businesses. When I say I was a, I was a boy, from elementary school at at Reddy Street, where I started, to elementary school here, McKinley High. McKinley Elementary School, lots of businesses here, and that also is in here. And people will donate things to the museum once they use them in projects or in displays, and we're always pleased and happy to have things from people in the community. What you'll see is the historic McKinley High School Phoenix Award, 19, 2008, 
This was two years after the building was built. We won one of those Foundation of American History, Foundation of Louisiana History Award 2008 for building design and utilization. We're so pleased about that one also. All and things that were contributed. I told you that buddy guy who was the Presidential Freedom Medal. Uh, and you can see Buddy. Buddy as a young man, 1970. Uh, fresh out of uh, McKinley High School, and then Buddy as an older man in 2017 with his Grammy Award winning album there. And Buddy also gave us a copy of the album, and in addition, he donated his, his, uh, his uh, guitar here. So we are really pleased about this. So some people from McKinley do a pretty decent job. McKinley was added to the National Registry of Historical Places the Act of 1962 and 1981. So this building is on, and, and so to make these few changes to the building, I can't make any exterior changes at all, but to make these few changes to the building, I had to get permission from them. And, and in the display case on your right, what you'll see, what you'll see of your display case on the right, you will see uh, some of the memorabilia items from past basketball teams. And you can see the McKinley Athletic Alumni Association and there's the National High School Hall of Fame basketball that was given to Emmett Minor, who was on that 57 team, and Cincinnatus Powell, who was on that 57 team also. And the caps, if you'll see underneath there's some baseball. Oh, if you see underneath see there's some caps that surround the baseball. I gave you the baseball is from the baseball team. We went down and asked the coach to give us an item of memorabilia and he had, had somebody in the art department to actually write their name and put some information on that baseball and donated it to us because we want to have football, baseball, basketball. I'm still in hope I'm still hoping that I will get a basketball uh from the from the football, from the basketball coach showing how the team has done. I've been trying to collect one of those for three years. It's my hope that I'll be able to do that this coming year. And as you move along, you'll see some of the other, uh, somebody came, uh, I can't remember their name, Ed Panthers, I can't remember what the family's name was, but you see those, those newspapers, that's 2000, 2001 newspapers, actually Kansas City Star. And what it is, it is a, a newspaper that announces the assassination of uh, President William McKinley, and of course McKinley is a fellow that uh, this school is named after, and I thought it was sort of important to to display that here. And then if you look underneath, you'll see candid photographs from activities that occurred at the old McKinley. That's when McKinley was over on McKayla Street. That's Mr. Jackson making a presentation in about 56. And then there's Mr. Lagarde making a presentation in about 56. Upper right, and then you've got some post-award day being by teachers, and that looks like Miss Young and Miss Ampey, I think they are. Oh, and then if you look over immediately down second from the end there, you'll find McKinley class of 1939 and 1940. Those are just photographs outside of this building in 39 and 40. And so, and so uh, those are old, old photographs that we were able to get from individuals who donated to the McKinley Alumni Center. And if, if you look immediately under this, is, I showed you Coach Turner or Tex Turner uh, outside on the wall. This is a, a large photograph of Coach Turner. He passed this past year and his family donated that photograph to the alumni. Center and Coach Turner was so important to so many lives at McKinley as both a coach and one heck of a civics and history teacher. Coach Turner, born and raised here in Baton Rouge, played his football at Grambling, coached at McKinley and at Grambling, went on to become principal at Capitol High School across town, and retired from teaching. And we thought it was also important to have Coach Turner here. There are lots of people, lots of coaches who held an impact on us, had an impact on us as students that we don't have photographs of yet. I am convinced that we will get those photographs in time. And this second display case just shows you a uh, uh, football helmet. I was able to get a helmet from the coach last year uh, to do on display and then a very, very old helmet that's been here for a number of years and that old, old helmet is from the 40s, 30s and 40s on the left, and the newer helmet is 
it, it's it's an older helmet and it's retired, but I think it's from 2016 or so. One of the most interesting things I have in here is, and it's in the display case, and I keep it in the display case on purpose. It is this photograph of Southern University and A.M. College and the board of directors and the people from McKinley. If you look at that photograph, it says 1915. 1915, that's when the school was over on uh, Hickory Street. And uh, and this is, I, this is probably the side of the Perkins Road School, uh, uh, Perkins Road and Bynum Street School. If you read, if you can see at the bottom, the first row seated is Dr. Barranco. But then if you'll notice on the second row, one, two, three, four from the end, you'll find that's Booker T. Washington here in Baton Rouge, visiting McKinley High School on March the 17th, 1915. If you look immediately at the Booker T. Washington's right, you'll find Dr. Joseph S. Clark, who was the first president of Southern, was, who was the president of Southern University for a number of years, uh, principally around the time it moved up from New Orleans. And that's Dr. Clark. And then you've got some other prominent people in and around the city of Baton Rouge. But I th and Dr. Frazier also was there. Uh, and Mr. Frazier is on the second row. Let's see, turn to the side. Let me see. Third row standing, Dr. Mitchell. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And right in the middle, directly above, right in the middle, right there, almost, almost the very middle, right there. Six from the end. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's Dr. J.M. Frazier. That's him right there. And the reason I moved that inside and put it there, I didn't want anybody to take that. People have these white boards that they sing, their signatures, and then nobody knows what to do with them. And they keep them, then they bring them back to me and say, can we put them in alumni center? And I tell them, of course you can. And so that shows you uh, two of those, the class of 71 and the class of 62. And then on the floor, you see Love You, Choo Choo, Malin Brooks, class of 1964. Malin, probably one of the finest running backs McKinley ever produced. Uh, Malin, 6'2", 220, state 100-yard dash champion, uh, 220. Champion, and that's of course when we ran 100 yards and 220 yards. So that's when we ran back at the four meters back in our class of 1964. Miller was in our class, very prominent in the city of Baton Rouge in youth activity and youth sports. As a matter of fact, personally coached Warwick Dunn, still personally communicates with Warwick Dunn. Warwick Dunn, a professional football player who went on to play for the Atlanta Falcons and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Warwick Dunn, also who graduated from Catholic High School right here in Baton Rouge. On your left, what you'll find is a, a, sweat, a tea, uh, sweater that was donated by a statistician family, and we found that in the closet also and decided that what we need to do is get it posted. I really would like some full-size mannequins so I could put those on, on the mannequins instead of having that just on a hanger, but we'll get to it in time. And then we'll have some programs from some of the, some of the programs from many of the, the high school games over the years. You can see McKinley High Panthers playing Lehigh, and playing the Washington Indians, and then playing Lehigh again. Lehigh local high school in Baton Rouge on the south side of the city was built uh, probably in, in 62, 63, 64, and that's been rebuilt. We're certainly, McKinley was built, the current McKinley was opened and was built and, and, and moved, moved to full utilization in 1961, we certainly hope we can get that one rebuilt as a, as a state-of-the-art, modern state-of-the-art school, as, uh, so as Lee and Baton Rouge High have been done. And as you look up the wall, what you'll find is McKinley class of 1955, and then the class of 71 just happened to be, uh, to meet on the 45th anniversary as Barack Obama was coming <laughs> coming in, into office, so they donated the shirt. And we told them, okay, we'll put your sweatshirt in here, just as all the other sweatshirts are here. What you, what you have is, on the floor when you step in, that's the Panther. We purchased that Panther for the 19, 2006, 17 
uh, annual alumni gathering. We did it with the Panthers, our Panthers, our mascot. And I told you, Dr. Doris Lott uh, helped us an awful lot. Dr. Doris Lott was instrumental in getting that and, and, and helping us arrange and decorate this second room of the museum. What we're going to do is we're going to end up, we're going to make sure we get this panther outside in the planter, or if not this one, a more durable, heavier planter, but our panther outside. And it is, a, and that's what that is. It was just, a, just decoration. And you can see it was donated by uh, Dr. Lott and myself, the panther. And we thought, we thought that would be just a great thing to have in the museum. I'm looking forward to probably moving the panther out front and moving the bell back here. I don't know if you remember the bell was in the floor in the other room, but I, I'm probably going to do that over time. And I think the last thing we need to look at in this, need to look at in this room is probably the I told you. Uh, let's see, uh, Mr. Branco and Dr. G.S. Clark, and that's Dr. G.S. Clark, and that fellow right there, and the fellow in that picture right over there are the same man. So you can see that's Dr. Clark right there. Circa, I'm not sure what year, but that's when they were, when they were foundering the Y. That is the YMCA, which is two or three blocks down the street from here. And what I have on the doors are the other classes. I, my bargain with every single class is if you have a reunion, you have a meeting, you bring me a picture of your class, I will put it up in the museum so that you can see it. And many, many of the classes do come in and challenge me at that. And then we also have the, the whiteboard that shows major rest throughout the years, starting all the way back in... Let's see, and I know we had some major rests from 28, 1928, the cheer squad, upper left right here, 1928, the year cheer squad right there, female cheer squad, through the other years, 78, 65, 66, 80s, and into the 90s. And once again, this was a special uh, display. Uh, one of the students at McKinley has a class project, and it was done, they brought it to us. 68. And there's that book that Old South Bat Rule is the Roots of Hope. We called the architect. I couldn't find a picture and I called the architect and I was looking for it. He said, wait a minute. Three minutes later he sent it to me. Here it is electronically. I took it out to let them and told them to blow it up. They blew it up and got it back to me.